gonna show you how to make this particle. This is a fire effect. And I'm gonna make it completely from scratch. So if you want to make your own particles, this is a really great place to start. Now I will post further tutorials on how to make more complex materials, but this is just, you know, get your feet wet with the particle editor and stuff. Now you can get pre-made particles from TF2's particle browser. You can use the ones that the game uses. Or you can download ones from like Game Banana. Uh, but sometimes you just don't get something you want. So that's why it's really useful to, you know, know how to make your own particle effects. So basically, I'm just gonna do like a simple fire effect, fireball for this torch. So let's start. So the first thing you want to do is go into your TF2 into your properties and add tools to your launch parameters. Now this is how you actually get into the particle editor so make sure you do that. Then you launch TF2 like normal Then you're gonna get something like this. Now don't get afraid. Uh, the next thing you will do is click on the tools drop down menu and select the particle edit. Now we still get nothing, so then you click new. And we get this. Now this can be scary uh, for new, new particle editor people, but don't worry. It's really simple once you know the basics. So on the like top left, you have this uh, particle list, and this is where your, all of your particles will go. So we will start by creating a tutorial particle. You can name it whatever, but this is the actual name you will use when you click on your info particle system and ha add a particle system name. This is the actual name for that. Or if you're doing modeling, then you will use the same name there as well. So, uh, this is our viewer for the particle. This is what we'll be actually seeing in game. So, first thing, we will select our material, and you can get that by going to the first um, drop down thing and clicking the material string. And you will have a list of all the things. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna select like a fire effect. Like, this is good. So, let's go with that. Now, we still don't get anything. Uh, that's because we need to spawn the particle. Uh, particles are just uh, images, like many images basically, with certain things applied to them. So we will go to emitter, and this is where we make particles. Now I'm going to use emit continuously, because this is good for fires and stuff. And now we will see that the particle count is increased, but we don't see anything. Well, of course, uh, so a source makes this a bit harder. You have to render it as well. So you go into your renderer property uh, panel and add uh, animated sprites. And now we can see it. Now it's going to spawn like hundreds of images on top. And once it reaches the limit, it's going to stop spawning them. Now we don't really want that. Uh, we want to make sure that it kills it because if we add a force generator, let's, like, let's add a random force to it. Like uh, from 100... to minus 100 and of course we have to this is adding a force to the particle but it's not moving well that's because the particle itself doesn't know what to do with this so we have to go into operators and operators are like properties and uh, force is a movement property so you have to have a movement basic and now it will know what uh, the force generator now it will know what this means and now we get this. It's going in every direction from minus 100 XYZ to plus 100 XYZ. 
and it's gonna choose a forest for each part. Every time it spawns, it's gonna pick a random forest. Actually, as you can see, it's doing it every every second, I think. Like, it's constantly finding a new forest to apply to the particle. That's why it's becoming like this. Now, as you can see, they they never disappear, and once they reach the limit, uh, they don't spawn. But that's not what we want. So then we will add a new operator or new property in this material, and that property is alpha fade and decay. So we're adding like alpha channels and decay, and that means it dies at some point. So the moment we do that, the default values have it at uh, I think one second, uh, one second lifetime, and it uh, fades out and disappears. And this is good for like a fire effect. So now we go to our emitter, and we will see that, uh, yeah, it's emitting continuously at 100 uh, particles a second. So if the lifetime is 100, of course it's going to stay at this value. Now you can make it uh, emit for only one second, then it stops, and it'll never do it again. It's, it's, it's going to loop, but it would a game actually just do it once and never do it again. And this is what we want for our torch. So now, uh, because it's fire, it looks a bit uh, like um, bad at the moment. So let's add a new operator. And now we want to add something called a uh, rotation basic. So now we will have a rotation. And just like with, with the movement basic, it required a force. We have to add a initializer. And initializers are changing. The actual properties and we want a random rotation so now it's going to pick a rotation from 0 to 360 and apply it to each uh, each particle and now it looks a bit more random let's say now we still want to add another uh, operator and that's for scaling so let's add Radius scale. Now this is not called radius basic for some reason. I don't know why, but same thing applies here. Now we just do random radius, and then we get some. Uh, it goes from one to zero to one. No, it's actually the default is one to one. So we want a uh, one to five. So now we get a bit of uh, randomness for each particle, and okay, it's it's okay. Now it's we're getting this stuff. And then we want to do is like a thing where it, where it shrinks and grows, like it gets smaller uh, as it fades out, or bigger in this case. So we will add a, let's see, what's it called again? I'm, remembered, I'm remembering this while I'm doing it because it's been a while. I think, yeah, yeah, it's in the actual operator at this time. So if you want it to change with time, then we have this, start scale and end scale. So it's basically gonna either shrink it out of existence, like this, or we can make it grow. And I think this is better for the, for the torch effect. Now we're missing one more thing, and that's gravity. Now fire goes up because hot air raises, so we will add a, a we will add gravity to this. So the gravity is in the operator itself. It's you could do it with the force generator, and uh, you know, I'm gonna do both so just to show you like it's possible. So we'll add another force to it, but this time it will be only the only the like positive uh, z axis. So we'll do 600. And yeah, that's basically a random force that goes from 0 to 600, and it's up. Okay, if we remove this and go to operator and do the same thing, uh, like here, yeah, yeah, then it's the same thing. But this is, um, this is constant. It's not from 0 to 600, it's always 600. You can add drag to it, because air isn't. Air, air has some resistance to it, so if we add, add increase the drag, then we will get something like that. Now we will make it a bit less, 
And uh, yeah, I think that's good for a basic to a fire effect. You could make it better, but this is like the basics of creating your, your particle. Now then, uh, let's save and test it. It will be saved by default into your TF2 particles folder, which is fine. You can pack it later or do whatever you want with it. And we're just going to name it uh, Tutorial Particles. And save it. Now how do we see it in game? Now this is the nice thing about the particle editor. If you press F10 and F11, you will go back into your game. So we will use this uh, test map as our uh, testing ground. So the particle name was... Uh, actually, I think we can find it from here. So we rescan tutorial. Yeah, uh, it's it's an error currently because uh, we made this particle while, ha while hammer was up, but it's there. You can just select it and press OK, and it's gonna kick it. And this is only in hammer plus plus, which you should be using. It's the best thing for mappers at the moment. So once you have your particle name and everything like this, you just press apply, and uh, that's it. Uh, then we just compile the map. You now you can use compile, pal, or whatever. I'm going to use this just because uh, it, it's going to be easier for those who are not using a compile, pal. So the map's called particle test. Let's go there. So what we don't see it, what happened? Well, we have to, uh, because it's an entity, you have to send it a input, of course. So if we send it uh, like uh, start and stop, then it would start. So we will do it manually uh, and fire test start. So it's going to start, but what is here? Why is it here? Well, one thing about particles, they need an origin. Now this is where the origins are, and there's nothing here. And if there's nothing here, it will always go to the world origin. So you will never see it because very rarely is the map... Uh, actually, some people have the map origin in their map itself, but some don't. Because it's not needed. So you, you might never see it if, it if this is the case. So if this happens, just go to your, your initializers and initialize like give it a position and uh, just do like this one and it's uh, you could make it a bit bigger like what like a, this this spawns the particle inside a sphere and it, you know it's fine it will do it in a 10 unit per uh, sphere from 0 to 10 if you do it from 10 to 10 then it will only spawn it on the like outer rim of this sphere uh, but yeah, you need to tweak and test for yourself if you really want to get some nice uh, results. And I'll show you some further examples in other videos. Now we have this control point zero. Now this control point zero, it's always the position of info particle system. So now it will spawn here. So now if we compile the map, actually, you have to save and test it. And now I think, I think we can just start it again. No, we have to stop it. And start it again. And now it spawns here. So that was inside the particle. And that's your first, that's your first particle. Congrats. You can compile it and stuff. But one more thing. Uh, you can't really just compile this with like a normal method. Uh, you have to make sure it's in the, let's see. You have to make sure that this is inside a specific folder in your TF2. So the particle itself, it has to be, the pack path has to be particles. It always has to be in this folder, the PFC. And you need another file with the particles. Now that other file is so in my root folder. I'll go back. Um, it has to be in maps. This is the other file you need, and it's it's the particle test particles 
Uh, and this basically is the particle manifest. And it basically tells... Um, it, will be, it will get packed inside the maps folder, inside the map itself. Yeah, a bit confusing. But you have to add particle manifest opening bracket closing bracket file and the path of your particle. Now the exclamation mark means that it's, uh, it's pre-cached. So it will load it uh, at the beginning when you join the map and not when the particle itself, you know, when some, someone does start on the particle. It doesn't load then and cause like a mini, mini lag spike. So always use the pre-caching. Uh, this might have been a problem like maybe like 10 years ago where video RAM was very small. But nowadays it's not a problem. So always just pre-cache your particles. Nobody really cares. So this is the basically the format. It's the particles folder slash tutorial test for my particle. And uh, just have this in here. And uh, uh, that's basically it. If, you're, if you pack these two files, then you will see your particle in the game. Regardless of if, if the person who has it. So that was the tutorial. Uh, hopefully it helped. And stay tuned for further and more complicated ones on particles.